The Night Fury, a fire-breathing mystery? Well duh, but this elusive one-of-a-kind beast has more going on than just that echolocation, a flame jacket, and a powerful tail whip. They have a large arsenal. This is my four phases here, and welcome back to the channel. And for my new viewers, welcome to this little house in your dragon channel. As part of the ongoing series about the Night Fury, today we're expanding the series by talking about the hidden abilities and weakness of the Ignomic Night Fury. So with that said, let's fire forward and discuss. Subscribe and turn on post notifications, and let's get into it. Let's start with their firepower. The Night Fury can shoot bursts of purple coloured flames composed of ionised oxid acetylene, which I discussed further in the Night Fury biology series, videos you should watch. These plasma blasts are not only visually stunning, but incredibly deadly. They can explode upon impact, devastating their targets. The Night Fury is known for precision. It can fire these blasts with pinpoint accuracy. They can control the levels of intensity of the flames and blasts such as that they can knock people off their feet, while at the same time being able to destroy entire battlements, stun other dragons, knock down gigantic dragons, and sadly, kill a viking. But wait, how many of these devastating blasts can a Night Fury unleash? Well, that's where things get interesting. While it's implied that the Night Fury shot limit is 6, there's uncertainty surrounding this limit. In certain situations, we've seen, seen Toothless fire more than 10 shots. Even in the episode Frozen, he is seen shooting 15 blasts. Which is very contradictory to say, suggesting that Night Furies might have the ability to recharge their blasts quickly. In the stowaway, Toothless demonstrates another unique ability, setting himself alight with blue flames. This is known as a flame jacket, similar to the monstrous nightmare. This flame jacket not only looks cool but serves as a protective shield, but could I fuck find it anywhere online? And it has annoyed me so much being unable to use her official bow. Sorry guys. The Night Fury's main type of attack is dive bombing. When a Night Fury folds its wings during a dive, it becomes streamlined, aerodynamic force of nature. This tactic allows for incredible speed and precision, making it difficult for its targets to see it coming, especially at night. Night Furies open their wings to create the drag, then lift off. The blast can do a great amount of damage, as one has even been seen to knock a red death to the ground. Toothless Tail is also seen being a versatile weapon, as he's shown using it to great effect in various fights. Toothless can use his tail to whip opponents, making him a formidable close-range combatant. This flexible and strong appendage has proven invaluable in many situations. When it comes to strength and combat, the Night Fury is no slouch. It can fend off multiple Vikings at once, carry the weight of two humans, and even engage in battles with formidable opponents. Toothless was also able to carry Hookfang by his tail with the extra weight of Hiccup and Snotloud. However, he was shown to be struggling to lift Baff and Belch with the extra weight of Hiccup in the Eel effect, but it has also been seen struggling off the weight of Meat Lug at points, so if you look at these dragons' weights respectively, according to the wiki, the Zippleback has a weight of 6,036 pounds, the Grunkle has a weight of 5,724 pounds, and the Monstrous Nightmare has a weight of 5,040 pounds. Add the weight of Hiccup and Snotlow into it, the wiki says 400 pounds, but this seems to be overboard, stupid wiki. So let's say about 126 pounds for Hiccup, because he's skinnier than the average human weight, which is 136. Let's add 150 pounds to Snotlow to him having more muscular physique. Then doing the maths, averaging the weights of the dragons, you'll see that the Night Fury is fine with lifting weights on average of about 5,600 pounds, but starts to struggle around the 6,100 mark. Well, that was a bit too much maths for this little segment, lol. But the Night Fury's abilities don't stop there. Toothless can also use his enormous wings as shields, protecting himself and his rider from dangerous attacks. The wings are incredibly resilient, able to withstand even the hottest flames and intense pressure. Accuracy is a hallmark of the Night Fury. Thanks to its strike class classification, Night Furies rarely miss their targets, even when disoriented or faced with challenging conditions. This precision makes them formidable foes in the heat of battle. When it comes to stealth, the Night Fury's jet black colour and dark scales allow to blend seamlessly in with the night sky. The only warning signs are the sound of its approach and the disappearance of stars as it passes by. However, they become setting ducks of spot during the daytime, unlike the Light Fury. Similar to Light Furies, Night Furies possess the ability to cloak themselves. They can absorb lightning from the sky and case themselves in electric aura, becoming temporarily invisible. The power comes with a drawback. It consumes a significant amount of energy as we see in the hidden world. The Night Fury is one of the fastest dragons known, capable of breaking the sound barrier. Its streamlined body and powerful wings give it a distinct advantage in high speed flight. Its agility allows it to dodge attacks and maneuver with precision, even on land. Night Furies have claws that can flex on command, acting as rudimentary fingers. This dexterity allows them to manipulate their environment and secure their gap when needed. They can also climb walls and surfaces with ease, using their sharp claws for a secure hold. Night Furies possess acute senses, including exceptional hearing and night vision. They can pick up on distant sounds, 
and see through the fog of thick clouds. This has been seen in various episodes such as Free Scaldy, Twin Sanity, A View to the Skrill Part 1 and so on. They also have a good sense of smell as Toothless was able to track Hiccup by his sense of smell but loses him when Hiccup takes up to the air on the back of a deadly nadder. Hiccup mentioned in The Night Ant Fury that Night Furies can smell danger as a lie but it is later revealed that it was true as, as Toothless demonstrated several times. Their sense of smell is also acute, though not near the levels of a tracker class dragon. In low light conditions, they rely on echolocation and navigate and locate objects. Various examples of this come from the Dragon's Riders of Burke episode We Are Family Part 1, A View at Skrill Part 1. This signal taking the shape of purple coloured sound waves bounces off all objects and obstacles nearby and allows the dragons to avoid them, even in mid flight. Unlike bats, this signal, or at least part of it, is still low enough to be within the human hearing range. These dragons have high stamina and endurance, able to survive falls from great heights and withstand powerful attacks. They do have their limits and can become exhausted under certain conditions. Night Furies are shown to be good swimmers as demonstrated by Toothless, he can swim at high speed and hold his breath for quite a while. The Night Furies do have a limited lung capacity and will drown unless they have access to air, as evidenced in the first film, second film and several episodes. Night Furies are exceptionally intelligent and can understand and learn various commands. They also display emotional awareness, allowing them to sense the feelings of humans and other dragons. Their capacity for mimicry, creativity and learning is truly remarkable. Night Furies can control the brightness of their glow by consuming glowing algae. This ability has both advantages and drawbacks as seen in the Fright of Passage, a Dragon and Riders of Burke episode. Night Furies are immune to the calming effects of sage fruit. Showcasing their resilience, this was discovered in the episode Defenders of the Wing Part 1. This could also just be due to Toothless's unbreakable bond to Hiccup and wanting to protect. In How to Turn Your Dragon 2, Valka showed Hiccup hidden spines on Toothless's back. These spines are flat, leathery fins placed in a V shape and extending from his back to the end of his tail. They give him more maneuverability and control in flight. Dragons require this ability when they reach a certain age, as revealed in the film commentary. I do have a video talking about the changes Toothless goes through throughout the movies, so go check out Night Fury life cycles. When in alpha mode, Night Furies exhibit a distinctive glowing pattern and their shot limit seems to disappear. However, this state is rare and only occurs when challenging an alpha. Night Furies, despite their impressive abilities, still have their share of vulnerabilities, as do all dragons. They can be weakened significantly by specific substances and conditions. For instance, a dragon root arrow can render them weak for an extended period. They are also vulnerable to the fear of eels, as well as dragon root, blue oleander, dragon vine and grimora parasites, all of which are serious threats. Furthermore, Night Furies are not immune to the universal dragon weakness of Death Grip of Venom, which can quickly subdue or render them unconscious with one vial. Even Death Grippers aren't immune to their own venom. Their aerial prowess is well known, but they have a vulnerability in the form of their large wings. These, these wings can make susceptible to powerful winds during prolonged hovers near rocky formations, as Fish Legs wisely pointed out. Interestingly, Night Furies have a charming secret, like Gronkles and Deadly Nadders, they have a sweet spot under their chin. When scratched there, they can become unexpectedly docile and may even collapse in contentment, making them vulnerable. Another unique feature of Night Furies is their tail fin dependency. These dual tail fins are vital for stabilising their flight and if one is damaged or missing, their ability to fly is compromised, as we saw in the movies. However, I feel like some other dragons in the series might also share this vulnerability, but at the same time, it is still a vulnerability. Unlike most dragons, Night Furies are described by Grimmel to not be able to consistently endure cold environments, icy waters or low temperatures. They require rescue from these conditions, as seen when Toothless was saved from the icy waters by the Sea Shockers in Halloween Dragon 2. Their endurance also has limitations when it comes to long flights, they need to take breaks and rest on islands, as their stamina diminishes after their initial burst of speed. The wiki also describes dive bombing in confined areas as a weakness, which I guess it is, but that can be said for any dragon who flies in narrow areas lol. This is what I mean guys, you can't 100% trust the wikis. Night Furies are undeniably one of the most extraordinary dragons in the Hotel New Dragon universe. Their impressive abilities and unique characteristics makes them a force to be reckoned with, yet like all creatures it has vulnerabilities. Understanding these strengths and weaknesses add depth to this remarkable creature. Case in point why I made the video, I hope you enjoyed this exploration of the Night Furies abilities and secrets. Until next time, happy dragon training. I'm eager to hear your thoughts and theories alphas, share them in the comments below and if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications so you never miss a video. I also have a Patreon where you can support me and help me allocate more time to creating engaging content for you. It's entirely optional but your support means the world to me. With that said, prepare for more captivating adventures with my four faces, stay tuned alphas and until next time, goodbye.